there's something very distracting about pain that could kind of take you take your mind away from its troubles. And then there's suffering in the que- in, in the service of a larger goal. You know, take raising kids as a good example, where um, where it's difficult. It involves sleepless nights. You lose a lot of pleasure, but it's valuable. And part of the reason why things become valuable is you got to work to get them. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Now, your latest book, The Sweet Spot, The Pleasures of Suffering and the Search for Meaning is out, and we'd be remiss without starting with, what is The Sweet Spot? (laughs) The Sweet Spot is the right balance between different human goals, like uh, the right balance between pleasure and happiness and meaning and morality, and it's what we all have to struggle to find out ourselves. And what the book is about is the role of pain and suffering and difficulty and struggling and struggle in getting there. I think many of us don't view pain and suffering as a way to meaning or happiness. And we're gonna unpack some of the science behind what goes on there. I think it's really important for us to at least start defining some terms for our audience. As Thanksgiving is approaching, many of us might consider time with the family as suffering, but what does science (laughs) consider suffering? Um, suffering has different, has different meanings. The, the meaning I use throughout my book is the sort of experiences you'd normally want to avoid. It could be physical pain, could be emotional pain, could be anxiety and stress and struggle. And it's kind of complicated here because I think some suffering is genuinely bad. And I'll call it unchosen suffering. To take it to extremes, having your child die, getting sexually or physically assaulted, getting a terrible illness. That's suffering that just sucks and you want to avoid it. I'm not telling anything you don't know. But my book is about chosen suffering and and I started, I got interested in this because I noticed that a lot of pleasure um, involves some degree of suffering. BDSM and scary movies, training for a marathon, that sort of thing. And then I sort of started to think about the role of chosen suffering as part of a good life more generally. Yeah, you introduced a term that I'd never heard before, benign masochism. Yeah. And this idea of horror movies, mountain climbing, war, roller coasters, BDSM. Why is it that we so often seek out sorrow, fear, and pain? It's a great question, and it doesn't have just one answer. So one reason, and benign masochism was thought of by my friend Paul Rosen, and he he really noticed that, well, you know, humans are the only animals that like Tabasco sauce. We like spicy foods. Some of us like roller coaster rides and scary movies. And what's going on here? And a lot of things. One thing is contrast. We like to play with contrast a bit. One reason why it's fun to eat really hot foods is because you drink some beer afterwards and that makes it feel so nice. A hot bath, a hot sauna feels great because of the coolness that, that follows. And that's part of it. Part of it is control. The feeling of control and mastery over struggles and pain. Part of it is that pain can kind of get you out of your own head. This is, I think, what goes on with some forms of extreme exercise or BDSM, where, you know, there's something very distracting about pain that could kind of take you, take your mind away from its troubles. And then there's suffering in the que- in, in the service of a larger goal. You know, take raising kids as a good example. Where, um, where it's difficult, it involves sleepless nights, you lose a lot of pleasure, but it's valuable. And part of the reason why things become valuable is you gotta work to get them. It also begs the question of how much of our narrative and story building around these events and experiences color the meaning that we have and how much, do we, how much control do we have over that framing in our own lives? It's a good question. So. My, my interest is in suffering and pain that we choose. But then there's the suffering and pain that just come to us, that's just, you know, part of life. And you're right, we're good storytellers. 
we often try to tell stories where there's an ultimate purpose for it. You know, sometimes these stories are religious. You know, God is testing me. I'll be rewarded in heaven. I'm, uh, you know, I, it's part of some sort of divine plan. But sometimes the stories we tell is we would say everything happens for, for a reason. Or um, this is making me stronger and more resilient. Sometimes the stories are true. Sometimes they're not so true. But yeah, we tend to, um, we, I think suffering has real benefits. But even when it doesn't, we tend to think it is. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Yeah. I know in my own experience, when I was training for the half marathon with Johnny and we were going through the pain of <laughs> running long distances and now even thinking about potentially running a, a full marathon, part of that suffering had meaning for me in I was doing it with others. I was sharing that experience with others. And I know in the book, there are some examples that you can certainly do solitary marathons. You can do mountain climbing on your own. But it was interesting to me how much of this experience involved others and being connected to others in that shared chosen suffering. There's a lot of evidence, both from the lab and from the real world, where um, joint suffering does bring people together and, um, and it connects people. And, you know, this is true even for unchosen suffering. There's a wonderful book called A Paradise Built in Hell that looks at uh, Hurricane Katrina and 9-11 and other, you know, major crises around the world. And these often bring people together. They, they often, often people don't prey on each other and descend to savagery. Actually, they become much kinder and much closer to one another. So suffering does have that power. But even solitary suffering, let me just push back a little bit. My bet is training for, well, I remember I trained for a marathon a long time ago, and it was really tough. And when, when you decide to do these things, you don't say, oh, I'm looking forward to the blisters and the body aches and, and you know, and maybe failing and exhaustion. But if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have that glow in your eyes when you're talking about it. If it wasn't tough, it wouldn't be valuable. I remember thinking during all that training and, and AJ, I kept pointing to, to him about the idea of how that beer after the half marathon is, is going to taste. And I put a lot of, of energy to thinking about that beer. Now, however, all done and gone, it wasn't really the beer that I thought about and how good it was. For me, it was that summer of training all summer for it and feeling more engaged every day than I was like I, I felt that I lived more in the moment that summer due to that training than I have so much so that I continued to run regularly after that and at that time the half marathon was the longest that I had run since then I had run past that multiple times because I just felt so good there was the, the, the amount of chemicals that were released through the brain, how I felt about myself, how I felt about the world around me, uh, the way I would be able to think more clearly as I would trance out during those runs and, and would wander through my mind. Those were the things that even to this day, when I think about training again or getting in, back involved in that, 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 that I'm looking for, not the beer. <laughs> not the beer, the, the beer does taste better afterwards. And you know, um, and, and you're touching upon a lot of the, the virtues of suffering in this context. One is it, it makes the beer taste better. It, makes, it, really, it really adds to the pleasures later on. Um, an, another is it makes the whole thing worthwhile, looking at you guys while you talk about it. You know, you can tell that this is a worthwhile experience. And, but, and yet another while you're doing it, and Steve, still you right now, there's a feeling of mastery of like, you know, you, you're, you have control over your body, you have control over your pain. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it's gonna be tiring. Yes, your heart's gonna pound, you're gonna breathe really hard, but you got it. And maybe, maybe, and that takes time. It takes time to develop the control, the ability to cope with the, you know, the pain, training, and running hard does to you. And there's a deep satisfaction in doing it. You, none of these things would be possible if it wasn't hard 
Well, what I've noticed, and obviously humans have been on this planet a while, there really aren't many feats that only one person can accomplish. So whether it's climbing Mount Everest, you join a club of people who've reached the summit. Completing a half marathon, I found even if I didn't run the half marathon with someone, just hearing that I ran, they got excited because they had that shared experience. And I feel a lot of these choices and suffering, and you talk about in the book, those members who join ISIS, for instance, are looking for some form of connection, even if they're suffering through the pain to get to that connected place. Suffering is a great source of community. And you know, it, it, it's, it's something which can happen in a glorious and wonderful way. It could happen in kind of an awful way. You know, Hitler commented on how suffering brings people together and the value of suffering and struggle. And you know, you don't want to be like Hitler. But one of the things people say about going to war is that they, have, they are never closer to anybody than the people they serve with. And, um, and I think that, you know, without going to war, without a military context, endeavors like training for a marathon or, or, or climbing Mount Everest have the same sort of feature.